just I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't know what what it was, or, or I just I just always had this feeling that some something was gonna happen to her. I didn't know if she was just gonna get accidentally run over. I, I didn't know what it was. Did you think but she would be kidnapped? Never, never, nothing like that. Okay. No, I just knew it was something. I, I just had this intense love for her, and I think, I think she knew something too. Something. I think something. I don't know if, if you believe in guardian angels or what, but it is. out of the ordinary on June 15th at all um, with your wife or your mother-in-law or anything like that or was it just an, a regular day do you think? I believe it was just a regular day you know and you know as far as we knew it was a regular day it turned out to be the most horrible day of my life but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah because me and Summer were you know very very close you know, I'm a really, I miss her. I, I wish they could find her, but the reality of it all is just not good. One ten, one one zero, Daniel Road, off of eighty three. You should see the first residence on your right. Reference to a missing four year old. The parents have called in and advised that the mother has went for a walk. Came home, now they can't find her. They've been going to work. She's been gone for about ten minutes. never expected for anyone to get a hold of my heart like she has because I try to guard my heart as much as I can but she just she's she holds my heart in her little hands and I love her with all my heart flowers with her mother and her grandmother and she wanted to go into the house so my wife watched her go into the door and she went into the house, and the boys were on the internet, of course, and she wanted to go downstairs and play with her toys. So when her mother come in, she says, where's Summer? She went down in the basement, but she didn't answer, so she went down there, and she was gone. So she went out the basement door, which was unlocked, and we haven't seen her since. You know, Candace was on one side of the house when she got gone. That, you know, not even, you know, 50, 60 feet away. You know, we know she wouldn't leave the property. There's no way she would do that. Well, we knew, I knew right away that she was abducted. You know, I knew that right away, and that's what I told them from the beginning. But they have to, they have to go through their, you know, I forget the word. Investigation. They have to do one step at a time, I guess. She's outside with Grandma. Yeah. Okay. She helped her get her brace on her knee, and then, you know, about two, three, four minutes, who knows, uh, come back in the house, and she asked the boys, you know, where's Summer? Well, she went down to play with her toys. So she hollered twice for her. She didn't answer. So she went down there looking for her. She's, we never seen her again. And so she boys, had a toy, like her toys were downstairs yeah, in your basement? Her, yeah, it was her and Waylon's room down there. Oh, okay. And the boys sleeping upstairs. And uh, some of the boys have a bad habit of getting up my door unlocked. Summer might have stepped outside and walked around the back of the house. I run the lawnmower around. She she would run behind me. When the boys run their bikes around, she as fast as that little bike could go, she would be behind them running and keeping up with them, no problem. You know, she loved to run. She just loved to run. Keep a close watch on your kids. Yes. Don't let them out of your sight. 
Some as parents saying they wish they could search every structure in America if it could help lead to finding her. Now that we know she's not in the woods anywhere, I wish we could focus on finding her. You know, I don't know what or I don't know. I gotta think that zip code's probably pretty spread out. It's not like there's 40 people right next door. It is very spread out. That area, another thing that law enforcement mentioned, it, like you said, it is very spread out. There were a lot of people there that have large patches and chunks of land. Um, and again, it's so spread out that people aren't on top of each other like they would be in a typical neighborhood. And a lot of these people do typically have abandoned buildings and other things on their property as well that kind of adds into that search issue as well. relate with and socialize with so we don't know anything about you know no red truck or we hardly know many of our neighbors I mean because we just try to be around good people I mean and we do have good people in this area we found out since this has all happened we got some real good neighbors and good folks everywhere but uh While every case is different, this one is definitely outside of the norm. Typically, in an investigation like this one, we have some idea of where the case is headed and what might have happened within a few days. In this situation, despite doing everything within our power and exploring all avenues, the circumstances leading to Summer's disappearance remain unclear. Yeah. So, and it's, as far as we can tell, it's none of them. Where do you think she is? Well, at first I thought, you know, it's, it's got to be some sicko, hillbilly, druggy, you know, drug her out in the woods or, you know, or something, or somebody put her in her car and took her not too far away or whatever like that. But I'm starting to wonder if it isn't some high-end thing. Maybe somebody's seen her on Facebook, because my wife was always posting stuff on Facebook. It could have been, you know, if she could be anywhere. Josh and Sarah, Hawkins County Sheriff Ronnie Lawson has told us that Summer's father, Donald Wells, does have a criminal past. Today, in some court documents obtained by News Channel 11, we learned that Summer's mother, Candace Bly, actually filed an order of protection against him. On October 14th of 2020, the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office was dispatched to the Wells home on Ben Hill Road for a domestic assault situation. Well, I told officers that Donald Wells came home drunk and saw someone else in the house and believed that Bly was cheating on him. Wells allegedly argued with the person and pushed Bly down, injuring her left knee. Wells was arrested and charged with domestic assault, possession of a handgun while under the influence and unlawful possession of a weapon. Bly filed an order of protection against Wells the following day, writing, quote, I am afraid of being hurt. He is abusive physically and mentally toward me. I'm afraid for my children and myself. Four days later, on the date of the hearing, Bly asked for those charges to be dismissed. On April 21st of 2021, Wells pled guilty to possession of a handgun while under the influence and turned the weapon over to the Hawkins County Sheriff's Office. Those domestic assault charges and unlawful possession of a handgun were dismissed. At a press conference yesterday, law enforcement stressed that the family is cooperating with the investigation and that while an abduction has not been ruled out, there is no evidence to support it. They're being cooperative, of course, they're upset. So we continue to keep them updated and do whatever possible we can to find summer. And Seven days into the search, there is still no sign of the missing five-year-old.
So what about people who think Don Wells and his wife Candace had something to do with their daughter's disappearance? Hey, what's your message to folks that may feel that way? They're just doing their job, what they got to do, and everybody welcomes them to do their job, you know, for sure. A lot of people thought that you sounded very just like you had accepted that. Well, I'm just accepting that God is in control, not me. When you got half the country's police force out here, you know, with all these helicopters flying for days on end and uh, heat seeking airplanes at night, and half the country's, you know, police force and all these other outfits here, they can't find her. Uh, you know, they're, they're powerless to find her, but God knows where she's at. I have to put my full faith in him. And you said, well, we believe in the resurrection. So what did you mean by that? Well, what I meant is if, it, if she's not found in the worst case scenario, my own sanity, like, if it wasn't for my beliefs in this, I would have lost it long ago. Right. I mean, there's no way I can handle this without God. There is no way. Right. I know that the weight of it and gravity of it is way too much. I, I know there's no way. But, so I have to put my trust in God and pray and beg to bring her back, hopefully. But worst case scenario, there's the resurrection. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know I'll see her there. Good afternoon, and thanks so much for choosing News Channel 11 at noon on this Thursday afternoon. I'm Cindy Kessler. Now, today marks one month in the search for five-year-old Summer Wells in Hawkins County. This afternoon, the child remains at the center of a statewide Amber Alert. And new this afternoon, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation says 978 tips have been received, but still no sign of the little girl. News Channel 11's Bianca Murray joins us live in studio with a latest update from the family of Summer Wells. Sydney, I spoke with Summer's father, Donald Wells, this morning. He tells me that the family is having a hard time coping with Summer's disappearance, which, as you said, marks one month today. Donald Wells sharing this statement to me, which reads in part, quote, the misinformation being circulated is not helping to find Summer. People on social media are only adding to the pain the family is going through. He went on to say that all of it is adding to the workload for detectives and distracting from the real goal of finding Summer, end quote. Donald Wells also told me that his other children are also being affected by Summer's disappearance, including what he calls, in his words, social media attacks on the family. I'll have more on the ongoing search for Summer later tonight on News Channel 11. Sit In knowing what happened that day, I know it's going to be hard for me to have to relive, but... Well, sir, I, I was at work, so, but from what my wife has told me and stuff, you know, uh, her and her mother and Summer were planting flowers by her grandma's trailer, which is about, you know, 20 feet from the house there, real close to the house, and uh, they... Summer is all of a sudden said, Mom, I want to go in the house. So she said, fine. And her brothers were in there watching YouTube. And so she watched her walk in the door and went in there. And then she went in there and her brother said that she's going to go downstairs and play with her toys. So 
Well, she went downstairs, and then Mom come in and says, we're summer. Well, she's downstairs playing with the toys. And she had that hollered for her, and there was no answer, so she went downstairs, and she was nowhere to be found. Uh, she went out the basement door. The door was unlocked. and But she's never left the area. She might be. She's an outside type, type of person, you know. And, but uh, she was gone, buddy. And uh, my wife called me and I said, hang up for me and call 911 right now. And I, I was at work and I called 911, threw all my tools that I could in the vehicle and from, uh, from uh, Jonesboro. I, you know, I come out, I, got, I made it out here before anybody because I was freaking out, you know. And when I got home, I drove to the bottom property and, and I realized that all my neighbors and stuff were combing the woods looking for her and I realized right then and there that she was not, she was not there. I knew right then and there that she was gone. I just, you know, because she would never leave there on her own. Somebody had taken her out. That's what I was going to ask you. Is, is, yeah. is she capable of, of no. going through? Is, is they've, they've covered miles of area to search. Yeah, it? no. No, she would never leave because I always, well, for one thing, we have bears and wild dogs, and we got druggies that, you know, come around to other people's houses and stuff, you know, all hours of the night. But this was like at 5 30 in the evening, you know. Which makes me think, you know, someone was laying in wait. I've heard somebody say that these uh, people track kids down on Facebook and find them. And, you know, I've heard that story. I mean, I don't know, but all I know is she's definitely not anywhere around there. She's, I think somebody's abducted her and took her out of the area. when I woke up is her feet and her foot being under me kind of, you know. I remember her being there and I, I covered her up a little bit or whatever and left. And she sleeps just right between me and mom every night, you know. But uh, yeah, I just went to work, normal day. She was asleep by my side when I woke up. Okay, got it. And yeah, what, time, what, yeah. what time was that approximately? I'd say about 7, okay. maybe earlier, 6.30 or 7, somewhere in there. Okay, and... Yeah, she had to be by me. She just had to be by me. So you're... And you take the truck, or the, excuse me, the car. How yeah. how far away is your job? Where What are you doing? It is, it is 45 minutes away in Jonesboro. All right. Yeah. And, and then, what time do you get there? Do you remember? I don't. I probably went and had some breakfast, you know, somewhere, whatever, and come out here. I don't remember for sure. No, I don't, you know, I guess the uh, couple of guys I talked to that day and the one day and the big boss that seen me that day knew, you know, knows where I was. I left early that morning. Summer was by my side and I left for work. And now, you know, I worked all day, and then I called her at some point, I guess when she was in Walgreens, I says, well, what are you doing, you know? And so she says something about taking them out to the lake, or whatever, and I thought, well, hell, I might as well just work late, because there's no point in me going home, they're out doing their thing, and there's just, I might as well just stay late and do what I can. And then, you know, when my boss come by and make fun of me, he says, got my car, and says, oh, geez, that brand new car for drywall, give me a hard time. Can you call? Uh, Candace, if you remember. I'm just trying to figure I, I, out the yeah, timeline I, and the window. I'm trying to think. I, I'd say, you know, maybe 3 o'clock or something like that. Okay. I don't know. I'm and, not sure of that at all. And where was she when you called her? Do you know? So I think I think she said she was either at Walgreens or headed to the lake. Or, I can't remember. Okay. You know, but that's why I thought, well, I might as well just stay and work. You know, that's just what I do. With Candace. Um, Candace's mother. Okay. Uh, Wyatt and Waylon. 
and uh, uh, my Atlanta Josie, my other three boys. And, uh, so all the boys were there too. Well, they, I either that or the boys stayed here. You know, I'm really unclear on that for sure. I don't want to okay. sure. I know it's been tough. I think I realized the boys were at home myself <laughs> right? Uh, because a lot of times the boys don't, they don't even want to go because they want to sit there and be on their phones. The call, what was the first thing that came to your mind? Well, she called frantic, panic, and panicking. And I said, well, just in case, hang up and call 911. And, you know, and I thought, it was, for some reason, I thought it was 530. To be honest with you, I don't trust police. You know, I, and we showed them all that information on our phones because they wanted to know. They wanted to know the timelines. So we showed them right then. When I got there, they wanted to know all that. And they wrote it all down. But, and, but, and when you got there, do you remember what time you arrived? I have no idea. I wasn't paying attention. I was I was on Messenger with Candace as she was driving her mother's truck around looking for her in the area. So I talked to her the whole way there, and it's really kind of weird that we was able to talk all the way there, because normally we don't have a connection like that. Right. So she, yeah, it's kind of odd. And what was she driving? Her mother's truck. Uh, that the Chevy, the Silverado? Yeah, yeah. driveway when you pulled up like a, no. a cop car or anybody you just pulled right there up. was nobody there i was the first one that knew i knew as soon as i pulled up as soon as soon as i pulled up and i didn't get a call back from candace saying oh we found her and i come all the way out from jonesboro you know and i probably made it 30 minutes at least about faster but uh I beat all the police there and I went straight to the bottom of the and I seen her break look and I knew she was gone. Because she don't go away from the house, ever. Yeah. And, and so I... Go ahead. Yeah, well, well I just knew. I, I knew right then. Yeah. I'm gonna shoot the bottom of the dog trail where it comes out onto Ben Hill Road. I don't know why, but anyway, this creek is down here. You see the water through there, it goes out through there. The ridge, let's see. But anyways, start it's right here. It starts and goes up along side of the ridge goes up to the top to the almost to our back door people said that the dog followed her scent down your driveway and then there was a couple people who said that they followed her scent down that dog trail do you know which one it was i believe that um i believe it went down the dog trail and up the road just a little ways probably more like where my driveway was or I mean, we just 
I mean, they're not going to share that information with us. What was your first impression of where you should search first? Well, that's, that's why I drove down to the bottom, because I, I didn't even go to the house. I went straight by that shed on the bottom. And is that the, the one and, where, uh, off the bottom of your property? To look yes, at? yes. Okay. And with that little dirt road, I went past that. I went straight down that hill, straight to the creek, and that's when I seen my boys, and then I seen my neighbor, Don, walking to the left side, the boys were on the other side of the hill. And I knew, like I say, I knew my heart just sank right there. I just, I just knew she was gone. And what brought you to that place first and not to the house? Well, I figured they was looking all over the house, you know, but and I, I was thinking, well, I probably ain't been out on property yet or anything, so that's what made me drive down there first. They was looking around the hill and everything up top there, and I drove straight to the bottom there where that little funky shed is there, and I and I went down the hill by the creek in that little four-wheel drive Subaru. I went straight down there to the creek, and I seen the boys down there, and they know not to travel alone. It was they was together, and uh, and I seen my neighbor walking around, and I knew my heart just sank right there. I just knew it that she was somebody took her. Okay, so on my way home that day, I knew that they were searching at the top of our hill for summer, and I knew my best bet was to drive straight to the bottom of our property. So up here where this house is on the left is our road. I passed it straight. This is all our property here to the left, all this. Our house is up there on top. This is our property. So we turn, I turn straight away in here. Straight. Our house is up there. Boys, what were they doing when you saw them down there by the shed? They were, well, they weren't by the shed. They was down just, they were, if, if you look down where the power lines are, you go straight down, they were looking, you know, walking around and looking for summer. And I knew when they, I just knew she was gone. So we were straight down here. Creek here, all down this hill right here. I seen my boys. Straight away over there, all three of them were together. And I looked over to my left over this way, and I see my neighbor over there. And that's that's when I knew something was very, very wrong. And then so I hollered several times, screamed for summer. Oh, and of course, no reply. Not in blind. You can see where the tree service has cleared all this out, all the way, both ways for power lines. Okay, all the way up to that house up there. But anyway, so. And then at that time, you know, I don't know if I looked in this hell shack here. It used to be for horses. I framed it in a little bit. I was going to try to utilize it, but I never, 
very used to. So, why wouldn't you have gone into the shed? I'm curious. I, 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 I may have. I may have. I just can't be sure on that. If I did, I went in there, but I'm not sure if I went in there right then, or if I went in there at a later time. I'm not sure. Inside this shed here, just a bunch of junk, whatever. The lawnmower. Winds blowed the roof off. Bunch of junk. So this time I drove to the top of our house. I guess I'll go ahead and film that. said this hill was real bad. I had to use four wheel drive. I use my two wheel drive truck come up this hill all the time. Without God and, and these people, you know, and and that's other churches too as well that have been supporting us. I mean, all all of church family is very. I can't. I mean, that's the most important thing to me right now. Time is of the essence. Time is yes. of the essence. Could she still be alive in your heart? You know, I pray for that and I hope. Summer, if you can hear me, we all love you so much.